I want to look at some of the formula to do, to do with circular motion. So, uh, just refreshing our memory, we've got a circle, we've got a radius, uh, the circular path that an object is travelling around. Okay, I tend to draw it in the same direction, with the mass in the same place every time, um, but it could be anywhere. It could be here on the circle, it could be here on the circle, it could be here, it could be rotating that way. Okay, there's a velocity that is perpendicular to the radial direction. Um, there is a, uh, we talked about the centripetal force, center seeking force, that is towards the center, Fc, and there is an acceleration in the same direction as that force. As there always is, according to Newton's second law, um, unbalanced uh, force leads to an acceleration. Okay, so some of the formula to do with this, we've got the, the velocity um, as the instantaneous velocity has to be because uh, the direction is important there but the velocity is always a distance over time uh, measurement so the distance around the circle <coughs> for one complete rotation is 2 pi r that's just our formula for the circumference of a circle divided by the time to cover that distance is one period so that there is one of our main formulas to use. This is a formula you can work out for your own, uh, on yourself, or for yourself. Um, but we'll state it here because it's quite important. Remember, that's just the distance over time uh, for one complete rotation. Okay, another formula uh, is. I think I've already stated this in an earlier video, but when we're talking about the period. Um, the period is one over the frequency, and therefore the frequency. Is 1 over the period. Okay, frequency is uh, the number of cycles per second, and period is how long one cycle takes uh, to be completed. Okay, another very important formula is the centripetal acceleration, AC, which is the one towards the center. Um, and this is one you can try and derive on your own, but it's V squared over R. So remember, any acceleration is going to be the change of velocity over the change in time. So you can play with geometry and different bits and pieces to see if you can work that out. That would be a really good uh, exercise. And if you work it out, please let me know how you've worked it out. I'd, I'd be interested to see your methods for that. Okay, so there's another very important formula. Um, and this makes use of Newton's second law again. This is the centripetal force. Uh, where are we? Fc. Centripetal force measured in Newtons. And force is mass times acceleration. So we're just going to put in mass times by the acceleration from there. mv squared over r. So that's a nice easy formula to remember. Uh, it's just the mass times the acceleration. We've remembered Newton's second law. And we've got the acceleration formula given to us above there. Now we can take this one step further. Uh, making it just a little bit trickier uh, to get an expression uh, a more complicated but perhaps more useful in certain situations expression expression for the centripetal force. Um, now it's mass times velocity squared. We've got this expression for velocity which is 2 pi r over the period. So uh, 2 pi r over the period squared, that's v squared, and then divided by r again. So we're going to reduce this down to a single equation. So it's still got m, we've got times by 4 now, because 2 squared times by pi squared, times by r squared, uh, over t squared times r. Okay, now with fractions like that I've got a few little tricks, but I might use that in another video. Uh, we can do some cancelling. We can cancel out one of the R's on the top with one of the with the R on the bottom, and we're left with centripetal force equals m or well, four m pi squared over the period squared. And sometimes you see that in different forms: four pi squared m R over t squared. But that's just another useful formula for us. We could also look at the acceleration as just four pi squared over t squared.